He will continue playing until one of the surviving players has one more point than anyone else, and then that player wins. And that's everything you need to know to play Wildlands. Well, it was everything you needed to know. But now there's a new expansion for the game, Wildlands Ancients, and this one comes with a solo mode. But we aren't going to leave you to discover it on your own. You're going to discover it right now with me. Hi, I'm Paula, and today we're playing Wildlands Ancients, designed by Martin Wallace and published by Osprey Games, who sponsored this episode. We are foolhardy hunters who have traveled to the most remote corners and furthest reaches of the Wildlands, driven by the pursuit of arcane power. There we have awoken the Ancients, age-old guardians of the arcane crystals. Faced with such indomitable and implacable foes, we've joined forces with other hunters to take the ancients down and claim the arcane crystals they protect. There are five ancient foes that come in this box, but today we'll be facing the tyrant, Greed Incarnate. He's consumed by the arcane crystals that he's guarded. He's even fused to his throne so he can't get out of it, which is super gross. I've also chosen to play with the faction The Nomads, a roving band of blacksmiths, tinkerers, and artificers. The solo mode expansion that comes in the Ancients box is called The Awoken, and its rules are pretty similar to the base game with a few small changes. I'll cover the rules that are specific to the solo mode as we play. If you want to know all the rules for the base game, you can check out Rodney's rules video, which is of course linked in the description below. And with that being said, join me at the table for one and let's see if we can defeat this tyrant. Wish me luck. So in the solo mode of the game, we aren't trying to go after any specific faction's crystals. We are actually gathering the arcane crystals shown in these object counters. I've pulled five of them out based on what is in our setup on our player board. We're playing greed, gold, and goblins. Mm. And we're using one of our crystals here, this orange one that matches our color, uh, just to track on our scenario track. So we, in this scenario, have the tyrant, and our minions we'll be going up against are the goblin and the crazed. So the objects that we have that we're going to be using in this scenario are five ancient crystals, which I've pulled here, three blanks, I have there, two explosive traps here, four stasis traps there, and five treasures. So I've got that there. So now we are going to mix these all up. And we'll talk about what those traps do when we get trapped by them. We also have some starting minions that you can see here on the board. So we'll start with two goblins on the board and two crazed. Our ancient doesn't actually start on the board. We'll bring him out when we're told to summon him. This is our minion action deck, and this is our ancient action deck. We also have our map cards that we're going to use to help us set up in just a moment, and our treasure cards, and of course our damage tokens. And then we have our characters here, our little player aid, and this is my deck that I've already shuffled, so that's set and ready to go. Okay, so in order to win this scenario, we need to capture either five arcane crystals, again, there are going to be one of these object tokens, or we need to defeat our tyrant. And the tyrant takes 10 damage to defeat. If our faction is fully knocked out in the game, all five members, we've lost. You'll also see on your scenario board if there are any special rules. This one doesn't have any, so we don't have to worry about that, but if it did, it would be here. And then keywords. So some of our minion action cards or our ancient action cards might have these keywords on them. When they pop up, then we'll know what does jelly see mean. It means the tyrant takes one damage for each character with one or more treasure cards. If the tyrant has not yet been summoned, instead advance the scenario tracker. So we'll go over those as these keywords pop up. Then here, of course, you have your reaction reference, and then your uh, scenario tracker here. Different things happen as you hit each moment, and if we get all the way to the end here, that's another way that we lose. So let's populate the board with our objects, our minions, and our characters. So first we do this with all of our objects. So I'm going to take our map deck, and I'm just going to give it a good shuffle. Oops. Ah! Terrible at shuffling. Okay. Then we're going to flip this over. I'm going to put an object wherever it says to. So that's 16. So we'll put an object in 16. 
10. Uh, that's there. And 27. So that's all of them. Next, we're going to use these same map cards to place our faction members out on the board. Now, in the original game, you place them secretly and you reveal them before you want to take an action so that the other players don't know where you are. But in a solo game, I don't need to hide them from anyone. I'm just playing by myself. So they will just go out on the board based on the random card draw I take from the map deck. So, Affin, a fawn, a fawn. Oh, because he's a fawn. I, that's probably how you say his name. He's at 29, so we'll put them there. Matilda is at 18. Joni is at nine. 38 for James. 32 for Moira. So before we place our minions, I think this is a good time to talk a little bit about the map we're playing. This is the Abyssal Lake. It's a frozen tundra. You can see there's frozen water underneath here. So there's a couple different things that are happening on this board. It's a slippery surface. If a character enters a space with another character and it's moved two or more to get there, so let's say it went one, two, three, because of that momentum on the slippery surface, it can push another character one space away. You also have these spots that look like this, number 20, this broken symbol. That means this is thin ice. Whenever a character enters the space, every other character on this space takes damage. So that's something I'm gonna need to be aware of as we're playing. Now these special rules for this map don't apply to the minions or the ancients. They only are triggered and apply to my faction, so ooh. So let's talk about cover. So these spaces with the gray circle have cover. If you're doing a ranged attack, you can shoot into or out of those spaces with cover, but you can't shoot through them. It also allows you, if you have it in your cards, to take the cover defense action. When you take movement, you can go for each move action, you move one space and you can go through the white lines. We have no hills on this map, so we don't have to worry about going up and down, what that does to movement or line of sight. In order to pick up these objects, we'll need to be in a space with the object, and then in the solo scenario, you can just flip over and see what the object is without having to spend any cards. Okay, so now it's time to place our minions the same way we did before by pulling random map cards. So, one goblin's going on 21. One goblin is going on 36. Then we have a crazed on 31. And then we have another crazed on seven. Okay, in the health, just so you know what's going on with these minion tokens, the number here is the number of hit points they take to remove them from the board. So both of our minions in this scenario have two hit points. Okay, so now we're all set up and I'm gonna draw seven cards into my hand. The first thing to do is probably manage our minion situation because they will act after we take our turn and then we need to be flipping over objects to find these arcane crystals. So let's see who I've got where. Here's a fawn on 29 and I have multiple cards that he can do, you know, because I can activate him because in this card has this symbol and that's his symbol, if I play that card. Um, you know what, let's start by having, Moira can move, she can't do anything else. So Moira, you can see, because Moira's symbol is on this card, but it doesn't have a little flag with an additional action, we can use this card to activate her for a move, but we couldn't use this card to activate her for anything else. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to play this card to activate a fawn. He's going to do a ranged attack over on this crazed minion. So from here, he has line of sight here through the, through the white line. There's no cover. So he's going to do a ranged attack. So this will do one damage if it hits. It can be defended by a shield if when I flip over the minion card, the craze's reaction is a shield symbol. So let's see. So I flip over one of the minion cards and we look at what the crazed is doing right here. Now this is their action. We can ignore that because it's not the minion's turn. We look at their reaction. It's a shield which does defend against a ranged attack. So we'll discard that. That attack fails. You're not off to a good start, Afon. Not at all. Great. Cool, cool. Good. Okay, well then, you know what I'm going to do with Afon? I'm going to activate him again with this symbol here. Instead of using the area attack, I'm just going to use this to move him. 
he's going to go into this space and then as a free action he's going to reveal this object counter <gasps> it's treasure so now we remove this treasure token from the board plop that over there and then let's draw our treasure card a holy hand grenade choose a space deal one damage to all minions and ancients in that space that's awesome that is a one-time use i'm going to keep that with a fawn so i remember that i have it just put that right there that's going to be really good okay should i do anything i think i kind of want to be conservative one two three four five well i could play one more card i'm going to draw three at the end of my turn but i can't ever have more than seven but i don't want to play all my cards all at once and then be out of stuff when i need to defend myself you know what afon's not done yet let's use him one more time i'm going to activate him again this time i am going to do the area attack which he can do in a space he is in or in one adjacent to him so from his little cover space He's going to do an area attack against this crazed and maybe this time it'll work so this can be defended against again by a shield cross our fingers we're going to flip over another card and see what the crazed reaction is <gasps> it's nothing that means we do one damage so i'm going to mark a little damage token on them one more and that crazed is out of here good afan you're not totally useless Okay, that's going to be my turn. I'm going to hold on to the rest of these cards. I'll discard these. And then I'm going to draw three cards, making sure I don't go past seven in my hand, which is fine because I only have four. Oh, oh, did I shuffle these very well? So these are all wild movement, which means they can apply to anyone. If I play these, they're going to let me draw two cards in my hand, which is great. And this exclamation point is an interrupt action, which means when I find out what the minions are going to do on their turn, I could play this and go, uh-uh, no, you don't. And then I could do an action before they take their action. So now the minions go. So now we flip over one of these cards. And first, let's see what our goblin does. So again, we can ignore the green box because that's their reaction. And we're just going to look at these boxes because those are their actions. Okay, so first the goblin is going to move one space toward the closest character. And we'll start with the goblins in the lowest number space and then go from there. So we'll start with 21. They're going to move up to 16. That's going to get them one away from Joni. And then they will melee if they can. They can't because they're not in the same space. Uh, let's see, who's next? This one will move one space toward James. And again, we'll try to melee, but they can't because they're not in the same space. Now we have our crazed who are going to move and if they can do a heavy melee attack. So that's bad. Again, we'll, ooh, yeah, this is not gonna go well. So we'll start with the lowest number. So up here at seven, this crazed will move into this space with Matilda and do a heavy melee attack, which means I need to try and defend against that. The only way to defend against a heavy melee is with a melee attack myself. You like parry it away. So let me see what I have in my hand. Oh wait, no, this is my discard. What a dum-dum. This is my hand, a Matilda symbol. Oh, I do have it. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna play this card here. So this symbol will defend against a heavy melee. So Matilda will avoid taking that damage. So then we discard that. That's good. So now this one who's taken one will either go after a fawn or after Moira. I think they're gonna go after a fawn because a fawn is the one who dealt the damage to them. So they'll move one this way. And then they will also do that heavy melee. Let's see if Afan has any way to, to defend against that. I don't think he does, actually. Oh, these are free actions. Actually, oh, I can. Oh, I can, I can, I can, I can. Look, okay. So let's play this card. So because this flag isn't associated with a specific scale, that means anyone can use it. So I will use this melee to pff, parry that heavy tack away, and Afan will also not take any damage good 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 good. discard that and now the final thing on this card is summon goblin so we will get a goblin that is the yellow ones and then we'll flip over a random map card the goblin will go to 26. and that handles the minion phase now we won't activate our ancient yet because our ancient is not on the board okay it's our turn again let's see i think that Mm. you know what okay i'm gonna play this actually to get the two cards into my hand so let's draw two new cards and see what we get discard that okay so a fawn this is good so now i can have a fawn attack 
Let's do that and then I would like to have someone else maybe try and flip over some objects because we got to flip over object counters to find the arcane crystals. So first, Afan will do a melee attack against this crazed and hope to kill it. So again, we flip over a minion card to see what their reaction is going to be. Ooh, they do not defend because again, the only way to defend a melee attack is with your own melee attack and this is a shield. So that is two damage. This crazed, bye bye, you're dead. All right, nice, Afan, good work. I'm then going to use this free action. This is just a coincidence, it has James on the card and I'm going to move James. That has nothing to do with anything, it's just a coincidence. But I'm gonna use this as a free action to come over into this space and reveal this object counter and hope it's not a trap. Ooh, it's an arcane crystal. Awesome, awesome. Now here's the thing we didn't talk about yet. How do I pick up this arcane crystal? I have to discard three cards that have the symbol of the character picking up the crystal in order to take it and put it on my card, which we are not going to be able to do with James right now because I only have two. Actually, look, so I can use a wild movement toward my set of three. I'm going to do this. I'm only going to end up with one card left, but I think let's get the arcane crystal while we're here. I mean, that's, that's our win condition. So wild movement, James symbol, James symbol, discard all of those. And then we're going to pick up this arcane crystal and that it goes on James. Yes. One down, four to go. So now it is minion turn. Okay, so our goblins will do heavy melee attacks, but none of our goblins are in spaces with anyone, so we don't have to worry about that, thankfully. Then our, our crazed go crystal crazy. And that is one of our keywords here. So that means for the purposes of determining the closest character during this movement, only count characters that are carrying ancient crystals. Well, that's just James. So all of our crazed are gonna go right toward James. We only have one on the board, thankfully, because Afan got rid of that one. So they're gonna move twice toward James. They won't end up getting into his space, so they won't be able to do this heavy melee attack, thankfully. So they're gonna go one, two, toward James, who has the crystal. And then Jealousy. So let's see what that means. The Tyrant takes one damage for each character with one or more treasure cards. That would be awesome, because we have a treasure card but our tyrant's not on the board, so we can't do that. If the tyrant has not yet been summoned, instead, advance the scenario tracker. Oh, we're gonna do that, and that now gets us summon the tyrant. So we are gonna flip over a map card, space 42, right there. That's, that's where he is, and now that our tyrant is here, I'm pretty sure they get an action, so we're gonna see what their action is. Okay, melee. Well, they can't do a melee because they're not in a space with anyone, thankfully. And then summon a crazed in the space the tyrant is in. Great, good, 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 good. There's crazed right there. Yay. Okay, so now the tyrant's on the board so we can start either trying to deal damage to him for our win condition or keep going after more arcane crystals. Okay, so now let's see. Let's take a look at our hand. Um, I am a little bit nervous about Moira here. Ooh, okay, I think here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discard this wild movement card to have her move one away, get out of there a little bit, protect herself a bit, and then we're gonna flip over this object token and see what it is. Treasure, yes, okay. So let's see what she gets. A blunderbuss, deal two damage to a minion or an ancient in this character's line of sight. We can do that right now. I'm using this as a one-time use, and I think we're gonna use it immediately. So we can trace line of sight like this. You start from the center of the number of your space, and if you can draw a line between that and other spaces to the center of the space you're trying to hit, you have line of sight. Now we do. Now this space has cover, but you can shoot into and out of cover. You just can't shoot through it. So we can, in fact, do two damage with our blunderbuss. I don't think we actually, normally I would flip over a card for them to get a reaction because they've taken damage, but the blunderbuss doesn't say what kind of damage it is. It just says you deal two of it. So I'm assuming this is not defendable. That might be wrong. And if it is, I'll put some text up on the screen right now to tell you. But also we're playing solo. No one's here to tell me if I'm right or wrong. I do what I want. Two damage. And we've used that. Let's put two damage tokens right here. 
Okay, so that's Moira's turn, which is a pretty good go with her blunderbuss. We've done two of 10 damage. You know what, let's have Moira keep going. I'm gonna discard this to use her symbol as a move action. She's gonna come onto this thin ice space, but we're okay because there are no other characters in the space, so no one has any damage dealt to them. And then for our free action, we will flip over this object counter. Oh no, it's a stasis trap. So Moira, what happens here is you stand on that, She's stuck. She cannot move until we have revealed all the stasis traps. There are four on the board. So that's pretty bad news for Moira. Ooh, okay, I think that's it for my turn. I don't wanna use all my cards. I wanna be able to defend myself if I need to. So I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna pull three cards to add to my hand. So I have this, this. Okay, that's some good defense stuff going on there. Okay, great. So now, minion phase. Okay, our goblins will move two toward the closest. Oh no, James. Okay, so this, okay. So let's start with our lowest number. This goblin's gonna go up into there with Joni. They're not attacking yet at least. 26 will move. They're one, two away from James and one, two away from Moira. So they're gonna go over to Moira. One, two, and then this one will go one into James. Oh no. Okay, now our crazed has exhaustion. So that's another keyword. That means one crazed in the lowest number space takes one damage. If there are multiple crazed in the lowest number space, the crazed on the lowest health takes this damage. So our crazed on the lowest numbered space is right here, number 20, so they take one damage. That's nice. Ooh, they're exhausted. And now our scenario effect, we advance the tracker. Whoop. Summon a goblin. We need to move fast. <laughs> We're gonna lose. Okay, so we summon a goblin, so let's draw our map card, number 40. Ay, ay, ay. No, there's a 40 there. That's the minion phase. And now our tyrant goes. Holy moly, three heavy. This would do six damage, but it's not in a space with anyone. And he's real slow, I think, because of this, um, this chair. So he doesn't move. Thank goodness. So he doesn't do anything. Oh man, if we end up in the same space as him, he is bad news. Okay, so now it's our turn. We've got to find ancient crystals and I think we have to get James out of there if we can. So what have we got here? We're gonna play this to have James do an area attack in his own space to try and do some damage to this goblin. So we're gonna shuffle this deck and then see what their reaction is. Hopefully they can't defend. No, they do not defend. Yes, so we do one damage to this goblin. Okay, great. So that discards. Now, I also honestly, I just want James to kill this thing. Maybe this is a waste of cards, but I'm gonna use this melee to now try and kill this goblin. So we get another reaction. And he does not defend because a shield only defends against ranged attack. So this dies. <laughs> Good job, James. Can Joni do anything? Yes. I'm gonna have Joni, I'm gonna use this instead of activating a defense, I'm gonna have her move into 16 and we're gonna reveal that object. More treasure, we're finding all the treasure. I would like to find some arcane crystals though. Okay, so we get rid of this token and we see what treasure card we get. Med packs, remove one damage token from each character in your faction. That's gonna be awesome. We haven't taken any damage yet, but that will be good when we're able to play it. So I'm gonna slide that under her so we know she has it. There is never enough room on my table, is there? Okay, I think that's gonna be it for my turn. I just don't wanna lose all of my cards because I wanna have the ability to be able to defend if I need to, and I've got some cover and some shield defense just in case right now. So let's draw three cards. Okay, ooh, more wild movement. Okay, cool, that's great. And let's let the minions have their turn. Okay, so a gob the goblins are gonna move too. So this goblin will move here. This goblin is already in the space with the character, so it's not gonna move. One, two, three, one, two, three. This is equidistant. So we're gonna have him go after James. One, two, three. So our crazed will also move too. And so this one will go, oh, it's closer. Oh, it's close, oh boy. This one, Moira's trapped, okay. So the crazed is gonna go there. 
Oh no, if it's equidistant, I think you choose the one with the lowest number. So when they're equidistant, I just chose whatever I wanted here. But we should really play by the rules where uh, you choose the one with the lowest number. So because Joni's in the lower number space, then Moira, this one will go there. And then this craze will go one, two into the space with a fawn. That's not great, but at least they're not attacking, they're just moving. And now we summon a goblin. We just killed the goblin. 13, right there, okay. Now it's time for the tyrant, and if he moves, he's gonna hurt us, I think. Ooh! Oh, jeez Louise. Summon a crazed in the space the tyrant is in. Another one. I don't like that. And then he would do a melee, but again, he's not in a space with anyone, so he won't. We're gonna have to go to him, I think, in order to kill him. And I kind of think maybe we avoid him and just look after crystals, but we're gonna run into traps. I'm not sure what to do. Okay, but it's my turn, so let's play some cards. We'll play this so that Joni can do a melee attack against this already damaged crazed and try to kill it. Okay, so let's see what their reaction is. Ooh, nothing. So we kill this crazed. Good, 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 good. I just wanna mitigate the minion situation here. Okay, good job, Joni. Then I want Matilda to reveal some objects. So we're gonna use this wild movement to have Matilda come into 17 and reveal this object. It's a stasis trap. So Matilda's stuck now. Great. Maybe we should be trying to kill the tyrant because we're just gonna all get stuck in stasis traps. Oh gosh, now what? You know what, James, get out of there. Get out of there, James, can you? I'm going to use, I'm gonna use this wild movement to move James one, thin ice, but again, no one's in the space with us, so we don't do any damage. And then I'm gonna use this, instead of for a cover action, to move one more, so we can reveal this object. It's more traps. Great. So this is an explosive trap, um, which means it blows up when we activate it. Anyone in the space or in an adjacent space would take one damage. We're the only one around. Now, if we have a shield, we can defend against it, and we do. So instead of taking one damage, I'm gonna play this shield card for James to be able to avoid taking the damage, and now this goes away. Thank goodness, okay. We are really low on cards now. So we're done, we're done with our turn. And I'm gonna draw three cards and we'll let the minions take a turn. I should probably be trying to use these rallies. Rallies let you move yourself and a character adjacent to you, that would be nice. Minion turn. Okay, so our goblins are gonna heavy melee. And we've got, yeah. So, oh, we're gonna take damage. So Joni gets attacked by heavy melee by this goblin. Let me see if I have any way to defend. I don't. So this would defend, but it's assigned to Matilda and not Joni, so I can't use it. So Joni's gonna take two damage. How much health does she have? Four, okay. That's bad. We're gonna have to use this med pack probably. And then this goblin will attack Moira. Same thing, I can't defend against it. So she takes two damage as well. That hurts. Now our crazed are crystal crazy, so they're gonna go toward James because he's the only one with an arcane crystal. So we'll start with this one, who will go one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, I think. They'll take the shortest path. And then they're, oh no, oh no, Moira. Moira is gonna die. I would have to, I think I could play this, but only as an interrupt. And they're already in the middle of their action, so I can't. So Moira is knocked out because she's going to take two damage from this. Bummer. This does remove the stasis trap at least. No more Moira. Sad. That's not good. Now this one will go one, two, and likely he can't do damage to anyone. And then jealousy happens again. Oh, this is good though. Okay, so remember what happens when jealousy is activated, the tyrant takes one damage for each character with one or more treasure cards. We have two characters with treasure cards, so he's gonna take two more damage because he's greed incarnate. That's almost halfway dead. Okay, okay, that is, that's good, that's nice. But now he gets to go. All goblins and crazed will move too. This is not good. 
one, two, one, two. This one will stay. This one will go back here, one, two. Both of these are gonna go up with Moira. That's bad. That's bad. That's not good. That is not good at all. We might have to use our uh, hand grenade. Choose a space. It's only gonna do one damage though. But that's okay, okay. Ooh, or, yeah. A fawn might have to throw that hand grenade on their next turn. Okay, speaking of, let's take that next turn. Ooh. Okay, so Matilda cannot move or climb because of the stasis trap, but she can still attack, which I kind of feel like she should do. First, a fawn, I'm gonna use this for movement for him. He's gonna move one here. He's then, so now he has line of sight to this uh, space that Matilda is in. Then he's going to spend this holy hand grenade to, now maybe I should be holding on to these treasure cards because they sometimes do damage, but I'm worried. I'm worried about my characters. I don't want them all to get knocked out. So he's going to choose this space that Matilda is in, throw that grenade and deal one damage to all the minions. So both of these take one damage. And we'll discard that. Then Matilda is going to do a melee against, I guess against the crazed. They can only defend this again with a melee. So let's see what they have. Oh, of course, of course. So they defend. So that did not work, which is a bummer. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh boy, I'm worried, okay. I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna have one left. I'm gonna spend this card to have a fawn move into this space and reveal this object. It's nothing. Blank, great. But we're narrowing it down. And then that's gonna be my main phase. And so I'm gonna draw three cards to add to my hand. It's a lot of cover. So I'll add that so I now have these four cards and we'll let the minions take their turn. We need to reshuffle again. Okay. So the goblins are gonna do melee attacks. They aren't gonna move because they're all in spaces with people. So this goblin will attack Joni. This is really bad. Who cannot defend against it. So that's one damage against Joni. She's now almost dead. You can see three of four. So that's not great. Then one melee against Matilda. Matilda cannot defend. I don't have any... Uh, melee symbols with Matilda. So that's a damage on Matilda. Then we'll come over here and both of these goblins are going to do one damage against James. Again, I have no way to defend against it at the moment. So that's two. That's bad. Then our crazed are gonna do heavy melee. So this one's gonna go do two against Matilda, who now has three of five damage. This one's gonna move toward a fawn, and a fawn can defend against it, so I will. So I'm gonna play that to defend, so he will not take that damage. He parries it. Gata. Okay, and now the scenario effect, summon goblin. Space 24. Oh no, James! Okay, we'll put that away. Now our uh, tyrant goes. All goblins and crazed will move too. So those are again all in spaces with characters. James has to run away from this. This is very bad. Okay, our turn again. Oh no, I kinda, should we just like go in and swing at this? Oh, I don't know, how are we gonna get? F ay, ay, ay. <sighs> James can't move. All right, Joni's gonna get out of there. Joni's gonna move one with this, uh, she can't use the rally action because Matilda's stuck in stasis. So come here and then reveal this. <gasps> it's a shard, okay, great. I can't pick it up yet, but I'm going to then, ooh. I'm gonna hold on to these cards so that I can collect more cards so that hopefully next turn I can pick that up. So that's it, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna discard this. I'm going to pull three cards into my hand. Okay, that's not, I need three with Joni's symbol and I only have two right now. 
So she's not gonna be able to pick it up next turn unless I draw more cards somehow, but that's not gonna happen. All right, before I let the minions do their action, I'm gonna go on and use this med pack. We're gonna remove one damage token from each character in my faction and hope that that prevents a little bit of death coming up here. Okay, so now let's see what the minions are gonna do. Okay, move and melee, great. So this one's gonna come over to Joni. Um, I cannot defend against it, nope, nope. So she will take one damage, but she's not knocked out because I healed. Um, and then Matilda can in fact defend, and so she will. I uh, will play this to defend against that. And then poor James cannot defend at all against it. So he's gonna take three damage and he's knocked out. Now this crystal, this arcane crystal just goes to someone else. So I'm going to give it to a fawn because he has no damage. Ooh, two, two are knocked out. So now the crazed are crystal crazy again. They will move three spaces toward a person with a crystal. Well, that's a fawn. This one's already here, so we don't have to worry about that. This one will go right into there. Then they will do a melee and an area attack. I don't think we're gonna win this one. <laughs> Can a fawn defend against any of this? Okay, if I have a shield, okay, I have a shield, that's it. So I'm going to defend against one area attack with this shield. So I take the melee and area attack from this one and then just the melee from that one. So that's three. We are on the precipice of losing here. And then we advance the tracker. Oh my gosh, remove one damage token from all characters, we heal. Oh my goodness. If only it had happened for James a little sooner. So that's cool, thank you, game. Oh, we have to see what our tyrant does. All goblins and crazed will move too. Okay, well all of these are gonna go one, two, toward Joni. Maybe we should give up on the crystals and just go after this guy. That might be the thing to do actually, because I don't think we're gonna collect, without before we're dead, we're not gonna collect four more crystals, but he's almost half dead. <sighs> I don't have, oh, but Matilda can't move. All right, I'm gonna use this to move Joni one away and reveal this. Okay, treasure. Maybe this will be something good because we could really use it, honestly. Teleportation stone. Swap the positions of this character and one other character on the board. That could be really handy. So we're gonna give her that. Okay, and that's it. I'm gonna hold on to these cards. Um, no, let's play this Matilda card and try and kill, and try and kill this goblin. She can't take any, I don't want her to take more damage. Okay, so Matilda's gonna do heavy melee. We'll do two against this goblin. Let's see how the goblin reacts. Cover, which will not defend against it, so this one dies. Okay, so that's something. Can you see I'm like chucking pieces around? I'm like so nervous about how this is going. <laughs> I only have one card, so now I'm gonna shuffle all of these and then I will put three cards in my hand. Okay, so let's see what our minions do. So our goblin will do heavy melee. We're not in a space with any goblins, so we avoid that. Thank goodness. Okay, crystal crazy for our crazed. They will go toward whoever has a crystal. They are already there, and then they will do heavy melee. Can Afan defend against this at all? Afan cannot. So, mm, that's two, that's four damage. So that kills Afan. Oh no. So we'll put the crystal on Matilda. Oh no, okay. But then there's jealousy, which means that our tyrant will take damage for this treasure card. So that's one, they're half dead. I need to get all my characters over there and just try and deal five damage, I think, because that's the only way we're gonna win. But Matilda can't, Matilda can't move. Oh, and the tyrant needs to go. The just, the hits keep coming. All goblins and crazed will move too. They'll go here and here. They'll go here. Matilda's about to die. Oh, I think I can make the teleportation stone, except will Joni then get trapped in the stasis trap? The rules say that if you have a treasure card that allows a character to move, the stasis trap goes away. Solo game, do what I want. <laughs> we are using this to swap places. This will go away because the treasure card allowed it to move, which I say reads with the rules. 
and then I will discard the teleportation stone. Okay, I'm gonna use this to have, instead of attacking, Matilda's gonna move one here. Then we're gonna have Joni rally, which means she can move and a character adjacent to her can move. So we are both gonna come here and here to rally. So now we draw three. There's a Joni card and we have a bunch of Matilda cards, so that's great to add to our hand. Okay. Okay, minions, and ugh, these might move toward us, but we've done our best to try and get away. So goblins are gonna go to, they won't quite get to us. Okay, so all of these goblins, because they're all together, are gonna go one, two toward us. But luckily this space and this space aren't adjacent, so they aren't getting right to us. Okay, so that lucked out. Crystal crazy. They're gonna move four spaces, y'all, and then two area attacks. So they both move in. That is a total of four area attacks we need to defend against. You can defend against an area attack just with a shield. Okay, we can defend against two of them. So Matilda will defend against one, and Joni will defend against one. So Joni will take one, and Matilda will take one. Okay, that could have been worse. That could have been a lot worse. Now, our scenario effect, Summon Crazed. Of course, let's see where it's gonna go. 22, oh, right near us, of course it is. Of course it's right near us, right there. Okay, so now let's see what our tyrant does. A melee attack, no one's in the space with him. Summon a crazed in the space the tyrant's in. Right there. Great, good, 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 good. Rough, okay, so I'm gonna use this to have Matilda move. And I think that's it. I can't do anything with these cards. They don't have any of their symbols. Okay, minions. The goblins will move too. Oh, but they'll stop here with poor Joni. They'll stop here with Joni. I think Joni's gonna die. Oh, and then the crazed all have exhaustion. Uh, one crazed in the lowest number space takes one damage. Uh, if there's a tie, the one with the lowest health takes this damage. That means this one will take it. That's two. This one dies because it got too tired. Thank goodness. Advanced tracker. Summon a crazed. Good, good, good. We just got rid of one and now we have to add another. 39. So now we see what the tyrant does. Three heavy melee. Luckily, we're not in the space with it yet, and that's it. So we're okay. We're okay for not very much longer. Oh boy, we're, we're about to lose in so many ways. We're very close to the end of the track. We're very close to all being knocked out. We're very, yeah. Okay, Joni's gonna be a sacrifice, I think. I'm just gonna keep her here because I don't want any of the minions to go after Matilda. I really want Matilda to be able to move and attack the tyrant. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play this Matilda card to move her one closer to the tyrant and then hold on to the other one in the hopes that next turn I can move her again into a heavy melee and maybe some other. Oh, you know what, if I'm gonna do that, I am gonna move Joni. I'm gonna use this card to move Joni one rather than using this as a defense uh, because I want her to possibly be able to come in and do some damage as well. Okay, then we'll draw three. Hopefully we get something good. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, perfect. So we're gonna have a rally we can use. We have a card that'll either give us a free movement or two extra cards and a melee. Okay, if we can survive this round, maybe we can do enough damage to the tyrant to somehow pull out this win. Let's see what the minion action is. Goblins will move too, but the crazed will do nothing. Okay, and then we advance the tracker. And all the minions will take it. Okay, 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 okay. Calm down, Paula. <laughs> the minions will all move over to where Joni is, but they won't attack, so that's good. Then, exhaustion, so they, uh, the one in the lowest space takes uh, damage, so this one, and that's that. Then we advance the tracker. All minions take one damage. So this one will die, because it now has two. They take it. And this crazed. So now we need to see what our tyrant does. Summon a crazed in the space the tyrant's in, of course. So we have another one of those. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna play this to rally. I'm gonna move Matilda first because if, uh, remember this is thin ice. If Joni moves in here and then Matilda moves, 
Matilda, they all take damage. So Matilda will move first into this space with the tyrant, and then Joni will move to avoid that situation. Now, Matilda, it's time for you to do some heavy melee damage. So the only way the tyrant can defend against this is if their reaction is a melee. Hopefully it won't be. We hit them, we hit them for two. Okay, we just need to hit them for three more. That is seven of 10 damage. Okay, 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 let's discard these. What else can we do? Matilda's gonna do another melee. This one will just do one damage unless again, the tyrant has a melee as their reaction. Yes. Okay, one. I wonder if we're gonna do this. Okay, okay, now. I'm going to use my free action here to draw two cards in my hand and hope they're Matilda being able to do damage cards. A free melee. That's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Matilda does another melee. Come on. Don't defend. That's a shield. That will not defend against a melee attack. We just need to do one more damage. That is nine of ten damage done to the tyrant. Okay. Free melee, anyone can do it. Matilda's gonna do it. She's taking that war hammer. I cannot believe it, we just won. That shield does not defend against the melee. Your greed got the best of you, sir. Why have minis in your game if you don't play with them? <laughs> we won. I cannot believe that. I really thought there was no way. I mean, we were gonna die. So we, let's see where the other shards were. So we weren't able to pick up this. This is blank. There's a shard here. We haven't been able to get to it yet. Treasure, stasis trap, blank. Explosive trap, stasis trap, shard way up there, another shard there. There's, uh, yeah, we were not getting those, were we? But once we focused on just killing the tyrant, I can't, those are some lucky card draws, some lucky card draws. Because if this one had come out instead, which was just after this, they would have defended. That's their only one though. So that's a pretty good melee against the tyrant. It's pretty good because that's their only card that can defend against a melee attack. Probably because, you know, he's like stuck in his chair. He's like fused to his throne, so his movement's not great, so it's hard for him to parry. Wow. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Table for One, and let me know in the comments if there's anything in the game you would have done differently, or any moves you would have made, or tactics you would have done that I didn't do. Is there anything I did that you were like, no, don't do that, focus on the minions, mitigate that risk, focus on the tyrant sooner. No, just go after all the objects, find the arcane crystals. I would love to know what you think I should have done differently. But be nice, of course, be nice about it. <laughs> Also, be sure to check out Rodney's tutorial video for Wildlands for more information about the base game as well as some of the other expansions that have been released. If you're itching for more playthroughs, well, check out the gameplay series right here on this channel hosted by Monique and Naveen. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on so you always know when I have a new episode for you. And until then, thanks for watching. <laughs>